first movie. Like the first movie was about a guy, quite narcissistically, you know, sort of thinking, I'm, I'm going to go out and have a good time. I'll help people along the way. I'm, I'm fulfilling a fantasy. But the second movie is about the ramifications, which is what it does to his family whenever people come after him, you know, and the response with criminals, because you've got the social Darwinism going on. You've got like a criminal suddenly dressing up like the son of a mobster then suddenly starts wearing a supervillain thing and feels he has to be this horrible little clockwork orange style bad guy you know so so you're kind of seeing the consequences of what happened in the movie one the first movie for me was about creating alter egos right about creating kick-ass red miss seeing hit girl uh i thought it'd be interesting to make a sequel that was really about okay, you've got these other identities that you've created. Who are you really going to be? Who is Dave Lazuski? Who is Mindy McCready? Who is Chris D'Amico really going to be in life? You know, make it less about the mask and, and the questions they're asking themselves as people because I think those are questions we all ask ourselves. I watched The Dark Knight a lot, not because the Joker's got the same aspects as the uh, Mother Effer, but how dark and twisted Heath Ledger was. So I really kind of studied that. Uh, and it helped me a bunch, yeah. Like, there are moments in the film that I feel very kind of like uh, of that tone, you know. They get really intense and dark, especially with uh, Chris's evil army. And, uh, and um, yeah, you know, it seems like a natural progression to kind of have the superhero teams, not now that we're, we're so accustomed to, like, Avengers and things like that, you know. So um, it feels great that we can kind of, kind of take that and add new characters and Jim Carrey, John Leguizamo, Donald Faison, you know. I'll use Star Wars as an analogy. You get a glimpse into the world of Star Wars in Star Wars. Then Empire Strikes Back broadens that world, darkens that world, you know, that makes it bigger and better, you know. And that's what we're doing here. You know, we're, it's a trilogy of movies, a trilogy of books, and this is the, the big dark sequence in the middle. When I sat down in 2007 and started typing, my thing was, what if Quentin Tarantino did a superhero comic? That was, that was my plan, because when Tarantino makes you laugh, he really makes you laugh. And then suddenly someone's brains explode over the back of a car, you know. And he's really good at that light and shade thing, you know. You never get bored it's he's constantly challenging the reader or the viewer and that's what i try and do as well you know that like kick-ass was my idea of if tarantino was doing a superhero thing that was that, that that was in my mind the whole time i was doing it it's not the same movie over again you know um kick-ass now meets a bunch of superheroes and it's a group of guys out in the street fighting i play dr gravity uh who is inspired by kick-ass to become a crime fighter and he also introduces kick-ass to this group of uh superheroes or super vigilantes called Justice Forever and it's sort of like um, Justice League or you know the X-Men or the Avengers. Well Night Bitch has a very sad story. Her sister was actually murdered and this superhero persona that she's created is really her way of fighting back. She doesn't want to become a victim um, and, and, and I think this is this is her way of fighting back. It, it makes her a more powerful person. I played Red Mist in the first one obviously who was the really just kind of young, naive kid that wanted to join Kick-Ass and be a superhero because every kid's thought about being a superhero. So he goes there and he, uh, in the end, you know, he's, lo he's looking for respect from his father, but he's also, he knows Kick-Ass is a great dude and he loves being his sidekick, so he's kind of torn in the middle. And then at the very end, he loses his father to Kick-Ass and that's just a complete 180 in his mind. And that's where we take off here. It's like two years later, but he just has not lost the drive to get revenge for his father's death. And he's just, you know, something happens to his mother in this one. It's just a complete dark downward spiral for this guy. For the first one, I, I, Matthew wanted me to kind of do no training at all, so, uh, and lose weight in fact. So I'd just be a normal kind of scrawny kid. Um, but luckily, yes, I could kind of uh, get a bit more physical in this movie, so, uh, and Hit Girl trains kick ass, so. He definitely has to kind of get more in shape, and 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 and. Uh, but we did that through like learning a lot of uh, fighting styles, you know, jujitsu, boxing, um, a lot of MMA stuff. So it was good fun, you know. You know, the first film had a little bit more of like a Hong Kong vibe to it, and and one of the things I love about Kick Ass is that it's about being a superhero in the real world. And so I thought it would be fun, you know, to allow the fighting style to evolve, and and allow it to become even more grounded, and and really show that you know that being a superhero has consequences and so that means like when you get punched in the face it hurts you know it takes you a moment to recover and and Aaron is such a gifted performer not just as an actor but also a physical performer and his ability to to convey that realism and in and, and his fights was just mind-blowing to me so I really embraced it and, and ran with a sort of a almost more of like a down and dirty gritty kind of fighting style. 
Kick-Ass is clearly not your typical superhero movie in any way, shape, or form. I mean, the characters all have dirty names. There's a lot of dirty language in the movie. There's a lot of, like, amazing over-the-top violence. But I think what makes it so different really is its heart because, I mean, we all talk like that. <laughs> and, but these are real people in real situations, and I think that's part of what, what people really love about the movies.